Hey folks, this is Shock, and um, I'm going to be getting on a faster freeway here. Everyone's merging, so bear with me. It's going to be at about 60 seconds more. I have to get all the way over here on the right. And um, it is a beautiful day here in California. And I had debate number 49 last night. This was an interesting debate because it, it was against a guy that didn't want to really say he was an agnostic or atheist. Now, we'll call him Joe. And um, so I'm going to be talking on this video. We're going to be picking up a lot higher speeds. Trust me. I know this is boring putt-putting along at 50 miles an hour. But we're going to be picking up a lot higher speeds. I have to downshift the fifth. Um, I'm going to be switching switching another freeway in just a moment uh, and we're gonna then that's where they really pick up good speed so it'll be a lot of fun I promise now let me get all the way over last night was an interesting debate because I asked the guy are you an atheist or an agnostic and he goes well, I don't want to say <laughs> now I know why they don't want to say they're an atheist say nice car, or an agnostic is because then you have to back up your claim. See, an atheist claims that God does not exist. An agnostic claims no knowledge to whether or not God exists. They just withhold their belief in God. So, get over here. The atheist claims he's an atheist. Then uh, he's the topic of the debate was: Are there good reasons to believe that God exists? Are there good reasons to believe that God does not exist? So he would take the side of giving good reasons to believe that God does not exist. But in a bizarre way, he did not want to say he, he he believed in God or whatever. So I'm like, well, it's going to be kind of tough to debate if you just are afraid to answer questions. Because you know how when you debate, you, there's a part of the debate where you ask the person a question, and you can't just say, well, I don't want to answer that. It, so, but I did get him to answer one question uh, at the start, that he does believe it is possible for God to exist. And um, the entire room said he was an agnostic based on the words he was saying out of his mouth. He was saying he doesn't know and stuff like that. So how the heck can an agnostic win the debate? Well, he can't give reasons why he believes God doesn't exist. And finally, yes, we're going to be switching to a higher speed freeway. Because he's saying he doesn't want to claim anything. So basically, he's going into this debate. This is one of the easiest ones I've won so far. He's going into the debate. Let's take this corner. And he doesn't want to present any arguments. <laughs> at all. So that puts him in a very bad position. Not only would I win by default, unless he's able to debunk my arguments, which he was not, he doesn't have any arguments at all. So, I don't know, let's see if this cop's pulling this guy over right here. He's following him and the guy signals on for five hours. No, he's passing him. Um, I gotta get over here. So anyways, I, I get up and I present my arguments and he did admit, like, on Jesus Christ, he was not that knowledgeable on Jesus Christ. That's fine. You know, I didn't pounce or anything like that. Um, let me get over here. I got, you know what's really cool? Finally, I can prove it to you guys. Look, everyone says, hey, you're not supposed to be in the carpool lane. Well, here I am in the carpool lane. And there's a cop right there. Finally, I'm vindicated. Everyone always says, hey, you can't be in the carpool lane. I go, look at California, you're allowed. So look, guys. I'm right here, smack dab in the carpool lane, and there's a cop next to me. He's not pulling me over. Look, he's even being real sweet and nice driving by. So this proves that you can ride in the carpool lane. Thank God, finally, you guys can believe me. Okay, and believe me, with all the revenue California needs to make, 
he definitely would have pulled me over if it was illegal. Okay, so let's get uh, to what he said. First of all, I want to go through, if you're a Christian or an atheist, whatever, I want to go through uh, some arguments with you. There's the cosmological argument. There's also the ontological argument, but that takes way too long to go through, and that's, a lot of people won't understand that. There's the teleological argument. Now, there's also the argument against evolution. Do you know, if you click right below here and go to creation.com, do you know that um, macroevolution has some serious problems? I was listening to a radio show, and Aaron Ra, who believes in this fiction of evolution, Aaron Ra was on the radio show, and I'm going to tell you what he said, and basically what he said proves that evolution, especially macroevolution, has some major problems. Do you know that evolutionists believe that a dog-like uh, mammal actually transition into a seafaring whale, a whale that swims in the sea. The evolutionists believe that, yet we have no transitional fossils proving this. It's a faith-based religion, really. Now, in debate, I'll ask my opponents, do you believe that a dog-like mammal transitioned into a seafaring whale? And they'll say, why, of course they do. But it takes shock. It takes millions and millions and millions of years. Now, they think by saying it takes millions and millions and millions of years that that helps their cause, but they're actually burying themselves by saying that. Because then we should have millions and millions of fossils showing proof of transition. But we don't. Watch this. Do you guys, I mean, imagine this. Do you know how many transitions have to take place for a bat and a whale or this dog-like uh, mammal? Do you know how many different transitions are between that? Well, if you're in a debate, why is this guy going so slow? I'm gonna pass him. If you're in a debate, Ask your opponent that, say, how many different transitional forms, how many times does, it, does the species, does it change as it's going from a dog-like mammal to a seafaring whale? How many? Now, they can't say hundreds because they're saying it takes millions of years. You get it? You can't say just a hundred different transitions. They can't say it because it takes millions of millions of years. But here's what they say. They'll say thousands. Well, it, it takes a lot of time, you know, uh, thousands of times. I've had some people say millions. Well, where the heck are the fossils? We should literally have millions upon millions, if not billions, of transitional fossils. According to Aaron Ra, there's hundreds. He was on the Thinking Atheist show, which is an oxymoron because if they were thinking, they wouldn't be atheists. But he was on the Thinking Atheist show, and he said, you know, we have hundreds of transitional fossils. Aaron, you fail, dude. That's a major fail. Even on your argument, Aaron, trans, uh, trans, these transitional fossils are missing. Even on Aaron Ra's argument, macroevolution is a joke. Now, I'm always getting this thing, uh, question where people say, Shock, do you believe in evolution? You can't just say, do you believe in evolution? Because there's microevolution and macroevolution. Now, microevolution is change within kinds. For example, how you have a chihuahua, but it's a dog. You got a German Shepherd, but it's a dog. You got a Cocker Spaniel, it's a dog. And you see this micro evolution change within kind, but they're all dogs. 
macroevolution is totally different than microevolution. Don't let anybody tell you differently. That's why there's two different names for it. Otherwise, it would just be all microevolution. Why would they have two different names? Because macroevolution is different. Macroevolution has not been proven. It's got major problems. Even Aaron Ra admits it when he says there's only hundreds of transitional uh, fossils. We should literally have millions and millions upon millions. So let's go through some stuff with you guys. This was um, debate number 49 that we won. Now, I've had a goal to do 50 debates in a row. Now, when we do these debates, you got to understand why we're doing the debate. This is not a debate for my opponent to try to convince me he's right. Neither is it a debate for the purpose of me trying to convince my opponent I'm right. That's not, my friend, why you debate. The reason why you debate is for the audience to see both sides, the fictitious side of atheism, agnosticism, and the non-fiction of Christian theism. 